So you're welcome back. It's your election command center. We know that it is 19 days to this general election that is going to be convened on the 7th of December 2024. It also means that for all that has been done by your election command center, great content, not only on tele television, but also on ground, what we've brought to you, extensive coverage, hearing from those who elect those into power being the ordinary voters or citizens across communities in community manifesto now women's manifesto you also have been giving us great content and then also more of your views over the period but we all need to make sure we climax together making sure that you carry all of us along as we certainly would do and give you a great coverage not only on the 7th of december but also down to the wire when the last vote is counted and declared by Ghana's Electoral Commission. You can get more of these updates on TV3 Ghana across our social media platforms and certainly 3news.com and the relevant social media platforms where we have subsidiaries of Media General. As you do that this morning, 19 days to that election, we want to take a look at two critical areas that are important to the voter. And this is stemming from all the polls leading up to today indicating that the economy infrastructure are also important and among those including the health as we have it of our country unemployment and the things that bother you most about governance and corruption or transparency as you join us, please make sure you share the stream. Let me say good morning to a number of you who have already joined us. I can already see that many of you are already excited. Join us with cash out. It goes with a short code star 439 hash. With star 439 hash also means that as you build up to that ultimate day and 50,000 Ghana cities shared on uh, the Fridays that we've had over the last five weeks with enter the sixth uh, month or week. And we're encouraging all of you to always join the cash out movement and become one of the lucky winners, certainly. What are the polls indicating? Well, as you join that excitement, also make sure that you're also part of the cash out movement. Stand for 39 hash, certainly is available for you. And uh, let me see how we can have some great insight into all this. Good morning to those who have already joined us. Nelson Akotia, good morning. Musa Ahmed, good morning. And then uh, Kingston Asimigam, please. You've joined us this morning, and we say good morning. Musa Ahmed, good morning to you as well. Please share the stream. Let's have some great conversation. Money, need money, those who will be joining us. But Musa Dankwa has been one of the leading posters this election season. And um, just take us through. What are the key areas, Musa Dankwa? Good morning to you as you join us, that the voters think they will be making their decisions on. The key indicative benchmarks or sectors, and what is most important to them. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Roland. Um, thank you for having me. Um, look, for over two years, people have been concerned about the economy. Economy, 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 by a wider margin. And then it follows by jobs. Jobs, jobs, jobs. And then you have education, education, education. This have, has been the key issues that bother every Ghanaian today. Yes, there are others who may have other priorities, such as uh, taxes, uh, petroleum, and other um, kind of issues. But overall, these are the top three ticket items on people's mind. Uh, what do they think about the direction we've um, been able to thread over the last eight years when it comes to the right. governance In of the country? In fact, in today's poll, which is coming up in a minute, more voters are saying that Ghana is headed in the wrong direction. 63% of them. 29% of them are saying that we are the right, uh, on the right track. 8% do not have an opinion. So overwhelmingly, many voters on both sides, or all sides, believe that Ghana is headed in the wrong direction. Um, could this go down the wire? I mean, is it likely to reflect the same views or up to polling day and why? Yes, because if you look at those who say wrong direction, by majority, they are opting for the opposition candidates. And for those who say right direction, 
by majority opting for the vice president. And at the moment, 69% are saying wrong direction. And if that majority goes to an opposition candidate, you can tell what's going to happen. Mm. We know that sometimes um, polls don't tend to reflect sometimes in some marginal case, don't have to, they don't tend to reflect what's on the ground. How do we marry the two? What's on the ground in relation to what the outcome of the polls have been and then also what the main issues are? You know, polls that are carried out by uh, people in just a single period, not consistently, they are the ones that tend to really not capture the, the true issues on the ground. Mm. If you have been doing polls as we have been doing since 20. 22 January. If there are any disturbances in the poll, it will self correct itself, maybe in a uh, subsequent week or so. And also, look, when the margins in the polls are not close, it is only tighter race that tend to give a bit of uncertainty because it could go either way. In this case, the polls have been consistent in the margins, and the polls have consistently over. 7,000 samples over uh, every 90 days has shown consistently that these were the issues and that the choice of voters would prevail in the elections. I can bet you on that. All right. Um, so, uh, there's a, a caller on the line, or uh, somebody who's watching us on the stream, Bruce Foco, says that if anything could change up to voting day, what would it be? Economy. 90% of the voters we spoke to in the last week said they have already made up their mind. 90%. I see. Very interesting. We wish you all the best. And thank you for releasing the latest poll. At least we'll also take a look at it. Uh, just suppose that with our in-house numbers. And then we'll take a re-look at it. Uh, just a last question. Do we still have swing regions? Or which, because we know that if you take a look at the last, um, reg the last week or two or three, the vice president has been in the Ashanti region. And you could see that there's a certain focus also on the eastern region and part of the central region as well. Uh, wh what does it tell us? No, it simply tells us that um, for MPP to spend a good number of weeks in the Ashanti region, all is not well. Because your stronghold shouldn't be an area you want to stay and spend maybe two weeks in. Uh, if you are exceeding campaign strategies and if it is normal, you should be in the swing regions, Victor Accra, Central and Western region. But if you have somebody in a stronghold, that tells you that something is not right and they need to fix that. And also sometimes I think they have the belief that they could win Ashanti and Eastern region alone and be able to win. And I think that is a wrong fallacy. Because you could win them, but other regions that you could come and lose them landslide would be a big problem. But I think they have to be strategic in terms of the way they deploy their resources. Maybe, maybe, not quite sure. We just want to avoid uh, maybe losing back. Well, uh, we'll see how that goes. And we'll be monitoring your page. And thank you for the latest um, document you've sent out when it comes to your polls this morning. So we'll be waiting out for it and subsequently also doing a critical analysis uh, with it within the day. We wish you all the best. Musa Dankwa Thanks. is the executive director for Global Info Analytics. They, are, they do uh, polls not only um, for other sectors of the economy, but also generally for clients as well, but have been one of our leading posters this election season. Thank you very much, Musa Dankwa. Let me say good morning to our distinguished guests as well. Somebody I've known, I believe, over the last 15, 16, uh, 20 years. That is George AC. Good morning to you, George AC. How are you? Uh, good morning, Roland. I'm good. Good to have you once again. Yeah, it's always here. good to be here. And then a man who leads the legal directorate of the NDC, uh, lawyer Edu Jitamaklu. Good morning to you. There's nothing good about this morning. Well, how can you make those conclusions? Listen, this morning, I am Just here. a normal greeting. No. I am so pain. I am disgusted and disappointed in the leadership of Akufuado and Baumia. My disappointment today stands from one thing. Ah, what have they done again? Listen, for a government in a very murderous manner, feed our children, our brothers and sisters in the various secondary schools with aspired rice. It is the lowest I have seen from any government.
Look, I have with me a letter from the FDA, and I just want to read. It is dated 29 December 2023. Managing Director, Laments Investment African Limited, unauthorized repackaging of Mososo rice. Look, for Akufuado and Baumia to feed our children with expired rice, repackaged rice from India, they have basically told me that it is rice coming from Ghana. 20,000 bags of rice given to our children in the various secondary schools. This is a national crisis. It's a national shame. And this morning, I call on my brother to join me in condemning this murderous conduct. Uh, uh, I the, never knew. The Minister of Education said they are investigating. Look, from December 2023, but for Honorable Okujetu Ablakwa, they were keeping it. In fact, Baumia was briefed on these key findings and kept quiet. What because, do you like mentioning no, Baumia listen, on any, any No, point? listen. And their fear was that if this thing comes out and parents become aware that their children have been fed with expired rice, their campaign on free SHS is going to collapse. So Baumia basically instructed that whole and thing. I only say good morning. It's okay. Look, it's okay. I am in pain this morning. I feel so disappointed, disgusted, that a group of people can do this to their fellow citizens. Parents, the verdict is yours. I only agree to Either you. to support so this greeting. impunity or to reject it. Um, George, um, it's what, just on a propaganda spree. Mm, uh, the ministry, the ministry said they are investigated. Yeah, I was referring so, that yes, to yes, him. Yes, yes. Yeah. How do you call it, this propaganda? These are emotional. No, George, emotional George, tantrums, George, this, no, this uh, morning, from, I'm so disappointed uh, Leonard, in you. Leonard you Leonard are my brother. Uh, you who, have been teaching in secondary schools. Rights, uh, you have taught in secondary schools. Since when have you fed children with expired rights? No, 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 listen. My brother, George, here. My brother, George, here. Are you saying it? He was a mathematician. You know, it, it happened. It's, it's you wrong. are calling it indeed. Investigate. The ministry says it's going into it. Let's, oh my let's get goodness. there uh, to the bottom of the matter. George, you it, used to teach mathematics in a secondary school. You keep referring to his used to teach. So no, you used to teach, so no, used to teach mathematics in a secondary school. <laughs> Ask yes. him when you were teaching. I only teaching. preached this morning. Was there any time firing. that school children were uh, fed with expired rice? Tell me. So let's get into the Shame the devil this morning. It's wrong. Edigy, respectfully. He says that the ministry says they are taking it. And I referred you. They said they are. That is an excuse. Coming yeah. from him, you need oh, to no, condemn no, the no, condom. No, it's not a excuse. Right. It's wrong. It's wrong. If indeed students were fed with expired uh, products, nobody uh, supports that. Okay. Yeah. Well, this morning, substantively, we want to talk on the key issues: the economy, uh, governance, transparency, and then also uh, the education issue that tend uh, to be on the top range in terms of issues that voters want to take a look at. So make sure that uh, you stay with us certainly, and we'll have some great time. But as we do that, and um, what would you have to say about that, uh, George AC? The economy seems to be top of the issues yeah. for which will be the key benchmark. And then subsequently, we have education, infrastructure, health, and yeah, thank you. transparency. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's, it's important. Good morning. Yeah, good I hope morning. that he hasn't unsettled you. Oh, no, no. Oh, great, great. Come on. great He's my brother. He's my brother. Okay, okay. Please, go ahead. And, and Yeah, good morning to you. Good morning to our viewers. Good morning to Council Head Uji uh, I, I thought he would rather be excited he was able to get uh, the High Court in Second D to get uh, his candidate, you know, uh, back in the race. Congratulations. You did a good Thank job. You. Yeah, so uh, let's come to the matter. Uh, President Kufo once said, uh, you get it. Assess your own. Um, you said President before one said what? Yes, Shawasitim Netuabapa. You get it. So when you're going to the polls, you assess your situation, and then based on that, you make a determination. It is uh, true, even. What do you today. think is the situation of Ghanaians for Good. which they need Good. to take a look? There are surveys over there. Uh, Musa Dankwa has come out. You've interviewed him, and he said economy is one of the key pointers that uh, voters are going to look at and that is, is very key to everybody. Every politician knows the economy is, is the crux of the matter. And then he talks about job and he talks about education, okay? And then the other. So these are the top 
three uh, areas that people are going to look at. Uh, this government, when we took over uh, the management of this economy, yes, we have said it. The first three years, our performance uh, was very good, averaging about 7% GDP growth. And then uh, COVID struck, and then uh, 2022 happens to be the lowest point in, in, in our administration. Uh, but that notwithstanding, we've braced ourselves and then uh, been able to put measures in place. We got into an engagement with the IMF and then that is released uh, about three billion, which about three chunks have been uh, released as of now. Uh, we still meeting the benchmarks and everything, uh, qualifying for the releases. Uh, so based on those things, uh, you know, the finance minister has come out to tell us that we have actually turned the corner and then we, the economy is rebounding. Uh, this is on the trail of the fact that first quarter of 2024, uh, growth was about 4.3%, and then second, or 4.8%, and the second quarter is about 6.9%. Half year growth is about 5.9%, which is uh, good pointers. And, and projections are that by the end of the year, growth is going to hit about 4%. Initial projections was about 2.8%. Okay, so these are good signals that uh, something is being done right. And, and that is, is comforting. Even that, uh, people complain from the survey, from when we're listening to people on the ground, that things are hard, they talk about uh, prior cost of items and, and all that. But in the midst of all these things, uh, government is able to uh, uh, get salaries of workers paid consistently. Government is able to get uh, fuel available on the markets. Things are going. The economic management system is going. There are places where some of these things have resulted in full shortages, uh, then uh, payment of salaries being delayed and all that. Which part of okay. Ghana? No, I'm not talking oh, you of mean Ghana. around the world. Yes, around the world. Some places, you know, had those challenges. But in the midst of all these difficult situations, this government is able to put measures in place. Resilient releases are going on. Infrastructure development is going, even though some have been halted, most of them are still ongoing. Uh, as we speak. And so uh, that's, that's something that is comforting uh, to the Gideon. On the uh, front of jobs, it's also a situation that this election, we know the youth are many, and, and you cannot go to them uh, without talking about possibilities of opportunities you are going to put in place for them. And, and Dr. Baumia has talked about the uh, but before that one, the Youth Employment Agency has been doing training, skills training and call for the young people. And then going into 2024, we are looking at uh, the possibility of the IT uh, training for about one million young people. It's, it's something that I'm excited about. If India did that deliberate policy, of training their people uh, in the IT arena. And as we speak, Roland, they've taken over the IT system in the, in the world, especially in the United States. They lead it, you get it, because it was a deliberate government policy. So I was excited. Uh, Dr. Baumia has also made positive that he's going to roll out that deliberate policy uh, for our young people going into 2024. The issue, again, of, of uh, uh, the taxes, e-levy and, and betting tax. Some have made the argument that why is it that we are power and we are saying when we win power we're going to take you think that. it's a legitimate question yes it is it is you think you, uh, the yes. vice president as head of the economic management team could have done something about it no I, i'm coming to that you get it it is a legitimate question the answer is it's because of the exigencies of the moment okay what are the exigencies the exigencies of, the of we've gone the economic dip that we had you know, you remember we did DDEP, the banking sector, and all that. And then we had the banking sector, don't forget, they were collapsed in 2015 State of the Nation addressed by His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. He acknowledged that he some, collapsed banks, the banking sector. some banks were in distress. He mm -hmm. mentioned eight or nine banks. In fact, he didn't end there. He advanced resources to support them to get them back on their feet. Unfortunately, they misapplied them, okay? And so when we came in, we thought, no, there's need for complete radical revitalization of the banking system. Otherwise, it's going to collapse like a pack of cars. And if your banking system is not functioning, you don't have any economy. You get it. And so these are the issues that led us to get the way we have. And we have done the consolidation. We've done uh, the other support that we need to give them. The banks are now posting some positive profit. So the exigencies of the moment 
require that we get some revenue support. You get it? And that is how come we brought this e-levy and the uh, other tax. And we are saying, when we come back, we will, you know, take them off. Because I don't understand. You brought a tax yes. which people are complaining about. No, the very people yes, in the service. Yes, yes, And they say so, take it off, and you say that unless yes. I'm elected. No. So we, we need it now to fill some gaps. You get it. And so if you're able to stabilize the system as we speak, I've told you half-year growth is about 5.9, which is very positive. You get it. And so if we're able to do that, that we say, okay, now A, B, C, D, we've been able to plug those ones, and the stream of revenues we are uh, uh, envisioning uh, is, is, you know, going up, and there's hope going into the future. Then we realign and then re-strategize and move on. That is why I said the exigencies of the moment demanded that. You get it. And so uh, uh, going forward, we've talked about flat rate and all that. All bother on economy. Last one. Uh, sometimes I, I shudder to comprehend why people think there's no nexus between digitalization and the economy. I, I, I don't understand. Who has said there's no nexus? No, no there's, the people say we have not, our candidate is moved from the economy to uh, digitalization. Are you saying the that it's a, wrong, it's a wrong assertion they're making? Yes, elected? it's wrong. No, is it not if true? If you want to have a proper I didn't economy, bring that. You are bringing yes, this up. Yes, yes. But is it not you true? You need that. that, is it that not true? There's a nexus between the two. Mr. Jodhi, oh, yes, is yes, it not yes, true? Yes, cool. it, it, that even from 2008, yeah. when Dr. Mahmoudou Baomia yes. was chosen as the oh, yes, vice presidential yes, yes, candidate, yes, yes, yes. run up to 2012, yes. prior to the 2016 general elections, the president now, who was then the opposition leader, yes, yes. did say that the one to resolve our economic conundrum yes. is Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Yes. Indeed, prior to 2019, 2020, he had touted, for example, yes. at various fora or forums yeah. that Ghana had the best economic management team led yes. by him, yes. as well as others who yes. were members. Yes, yes. Two, he had yes. arrested the dollar. Yes. The key was even given to the IGP. Of course, that at the time wasn't occupied by Dr. Dampari. And subsequently, he said that borrowing was not bad because even though he had said that in opposition, yeah. they were able to manage other key indicators of the economy. And so that made borrowing very good. And that even in 2020, when we had COVID, that it was the first time across the West African subreach as well as other global areas like ours that a situation, a pandemic like COVID had been well managed by any country, and he took credit for that. Why is it now that when he's been called out for not holding himself to be the Messiah to resolve our economic difficulties, you are saying that people are saying that he's running to digitalization? No, so I'm saying the two are interlinked and intertwined, you see, as far as economic management is concerned. And, and I asked you, has anybody said they no. are not? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, people are. Well, I've had His Excellency John Dramani Mahama say uh, Vice President has moved away from the economy and is now on because digitalization. He said that he yes, the and one, I'm saying the economic two, messiah. The two work. And I, I am telling you, the presence of Dr. Baumia has actually saved us. And, and, but for that, I think our situation would have been worse. Some of the figures we look at, the issue of, of, of forex availability, okay, and the issue of gold purchase uh, uh, program that is being run by this uh, government. Bank of Ghana has over five billion dollar reserve of gold purchase. Okay, and and you know these are issues that we need to look at. And then you know the gold for oil issues that we're using. All these things have actually helped us in the management of the forex. Okay, maybe we would have been worse than where we are. Okay, there are some data and figures that you look at and you say, wow, if if certain things had not been put in place. Uh, Roland, uh, things would have been uh, worse than what we have. Adoji, things could have been worse. We have DDEP, even yes. external creditors who have to take a lot of haircuts externally. Uh, we've had difficulties in managed bread and butter issues. I'm sure the dollar could have been ha how much? It's now 70. You say it could have been how much? I say it could have been worse. We don't know. So what rate? Yes. Do you think the dollar would have been worse? Yeah. Yeah. The, the situation could have been worse. Yeah. Because I, maybe I, we I, get I, figures I, to support I, the, the I mean, depreciation issues under, the under J. Yeah, this this what morning, we have now. my brother feigned ignorance and said he's relying on a so-called Ghana Education Service or Ministry of Education oh, investigation. Systems, First of all, it's important to make this point. There's conclusive evidence from the FDA 
about that illegality. The, the same, rice, the yes, sports rice. The same had been admitted by the company. What is painful that this rice was taken to Presec and distributed to secondary schools in Greater Accra. Presec also got? Yes. If you're a young man and you are watching me today and you were fed from December 2023 to date, know that you were given expired rice. You cannot reward the people who decided to feed you with expired rice with your food. But you see, even more yeah, important, this morning, I listened to uh, 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 the executive director, Global Info Analytic, make the point, consensus, uh -huh. that the economy is the number one on the priority of Ghanaians. In fact, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya had this to say, and I'll just reference him. He said, at the end of the day, the pocket is the economy. No amount of economic gymnastic or rhetoric can ever change that, unquote. Look, with this said, it leaves nobody in doubt that for the 2024 election, the economy will be number one, number two, number three. People are looking for jobs. And that is why A.G. John Dramani Mahama has promised the young people of this country that with the benefit of power, 25,000 young people will be offered employment within our security agencies in order to actualize the 24-hour economy policy program. Employment? Because, yes, because security is linked with ensuring that the 24-hour economy policy program works. Two, as many of our women who have decided to do their own business. H.E. John Dramani Mahama has a beautiful package for you. That is the Women Development Bank. And he's targeting to support over one million women with capital to start. And look, the unique thing is, and on the campaign, I always tell uh, the women folks, I say, when a woman gets so much money, he doesn't marry another man. Nah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. When a woman gets money, he doesn't marry another man. You understand? So when you support... Our women don't change men like that. Please. Implying? When you support our women with skills, employable skills and resources, the end benefit is that at the end of the day, you are empowering a household, which for me is very important. The other thing is, H. John Dramani Mahama is promising young people of this country one million digital skills, one million young people with digital skills, coding program. In fact, in our 2020 manifesto, it was in. I've noted that the MPP have decided to go and steal that policy and make it look like this. It never featured in your 2020 manifesto. Where you suddenly got that policy from, I don't know. So if you pick the 24-hour economy policy program, you pick the 25,000 jobs, security jobs, you pick the 1 million sub, uh, uh, women benefiting from the Women Development Bank. Among other things, John Dramani Mahama is going to do a robust attack of the distance. But you see, my brother makes the claim. Yeah, he says that, that, that the economy... If not for Dr. No, Mahmoud Dubami no, and the economic management team and Dr... And that he uh, even make the point that... The, the economy, economy could have been worse. No, the city said, would have been he worse. He even said that the economy has turned around yeah, the corner. Around, yes. mm -hmm. How can an economy turn around the corner when your exchange rate is doing 17 cities to a dollar? And now let me put it in practical terms. Let me put it in practical terms. This morning, you are a fisherman. You are watching me. In 2016, you needed 3,600 Ghana cities to buy one outboard motor. 3,600. Today, under the watch of Dr. Mahmoud Ubaumia, you need 38,000 to buy the same outboard motor. The economy has turned around. Two, if you are a businessman and you had 1 million Ghana cities in 2016, that 1 million gave you $250,000. So if you are a spare pass dealer, you are an Obroni Wawu buyer, or you bring Obroni Wawu to come and sell for burn down boutique people, right? What you should know is that in 2016, you could get, if a container is $50,000, you could get five containers without $250,000. Do you know today, under the incompetent mismanagement of the exchange rate by Dr. Mahmoud Bahamia, 
That one million Ghana cities, that used to give you two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, it's now giving you sixty five thousand. They say it could have been worse. I beg you, hold on. It's giving you sixty five thousand dollars from two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Painfully, painfully today. If you needed a, a ten thousand dollars to buy anything abroad, do you know that you needed forty two thousand cities? In 2016, to get that uh, $10,000. Today, you need 172,000 Ghana CD. The economy has turned, uh, turned around the corner. Now, the most painful part, the most painful part, if your mother, your father, is on diabetes drug, is on BP drug, by reason of the exchange rate depreciation, it is costing you four times to buy the same BP drug, the same diabetic drug for our mothers. George, are you not ashamed of yourself oh. that this morning you are defending that incompetence, I will tell you, that murderers, that murderers, today people are dying because they are unable to buy their BP and diabetic drug. Hmm. What you should be doing? Eduji, why are you it's running down the government? And to because he says that it could have been worse, Eduji. But you see the painful part. When Akufuado got $58 million, one would have expected that prudence, a man oh, at his God. advanced age, he would think about the future of our people. Do you why, know what he did? Why are you going with this? He used $58 million to dig a hole. You know, Saglame? Ah, at least their houses. Their houses. You can see houses that That's you have our, wasted, houses, you that you have wasted. At least you can see houses. What we have here, look, from this show, <laughs> I want the next Monday show to be done at the cathedral site for Ghanaians who have an appreciation. You, you want what? The next show on Monday to be done at the hole, near the hole, the hole at the cathedral. That's fine. But, oh, please, 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 no. I beg you. Do you know the painful part? You've used $58 million. That's almost one billion Ghana cities to dig a hole. Young people are looking for jobs. That over one billion Ghana cities that was used to dig a hole, my brother Courage, that money was enough to create one million jobs for young people. Akufado wasted that money. Painfully, painfully. As we speak now, Akufado has awarded. $54 million contract for supply of ambulance to the boyfriend of the daughter, Stephen Okoro, the Nigerian guy. $54 million. What's wrong with award of contract? Ah, so sourced for Is nothing. Oh, hold on. As we speak, Akufuado, together with Eslawusu, awarded a contract to a Nigerian, and this is the most painful part. Whereupon, we are paying this Nigerian, Kenny Jiviji, $1.5 million every month for no work done. You lie. What do you mean by no I'll work done? I'll tell you what Kenny is doing. Look, they brought Kenny Jiviji to come and do <laughs> revenue assurance. They claim that the, the, the telcos were Good. stealing. Good. They were under-declaring. From 2018 to date, we have demanded data from Kenny GVD to show, but for their intervention, how much was lost. No data, no work. And listen, Akufuado. You are nodding your head. See, anyway, that's uh, Kari Jinobi. Welcome. I'll conclude on this. Yeah. The Let, painful, yes, the, the, the painful, the painful part of all of this is a vote for Dr. Mahmoud Bahamia. It's a protection of the Kenny GVG deal. That benefit Akufuado directly. You mean to be cancelled? So, 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 no, no, there the is no legal justification for continuing the Kenny GVG deal. But I want to conclude on this. Look, the, the Catholic bishops. What are they done to you? They the called Catholic, you? No, the Catholic bishops had their last program and concluded. And because you raised the Our issue of governors, governors, governors. Yeah. so I want to conclude <laughs> on this vest issue by our respected Catholic bishops. And this is what they say. <clears throat> I'll conclude on this. Oh. Approve anti-LGBTQ bill 
Catholic bishops to Akufuado. My brother here is a Christian. I'm a Christian. Courage, he is even a you man should, of God. You should approve what? I'm not going to say it. Oh, wait, please, please, please. LGBTQ. Yes. Courage here is a very respected man of God. <laughs> the Catholic bishops are saying that Akufuado's refusal to sign the anti LGBTQ law is deliberate. And that what Akufuado has done is to provide excuses upon excuses. The only irresistible conclusion you can give is that Mr. Akufuado cannot, cannot, cannot ensure a legislation that has caused please cannot ensure that the laws of this country is culturally sensitive. It matters not to Akufuado and Dr. Mahmoud Obamia if the young people we, we of this country, this country if the young people of this country engage in conduct unbecoming. And that is why the Catholic bishop have sentence. come to the conclusion that, that he, should sign. he, Mr. Akufuado, together with his vice, Dr. Mahmoud Obamia, must ensure that this law is passed. Failure within which Ghanaians have Every right to reject the MPP in the nurse. What rule of law? Akufado instigated the instigated the plaintiffs. He He instigated the plaintiffs to go to court to stop them from him from signing. He instigated Amanda. I know Amanda. Economy, unemployment, education, we have roads, corruption, all in there. And the bread and butter issues need to be coming up, we're told. So that's where they... And um, you take a look at what the key issues are for voters. 77% averaging, 76%. So between the male and female, averagely, uh, that's a key concern. The bread and butter issue. You, you think that it's been relegated by, by the government and then the economic management team and then also even the campaign, because you keep uh, raising that incessantly alongside the opposition party as well. Uh, thank you very much, Roland. And uh, uh, first of all, my apologies for my late arrival. Um, you are forgiven. Yes, yes. Right. Um, but what I would, I would want to use your platform to reach out to are the contractors on the Accra Mamoto Way Expansion Project. The contractors? Yes. What have they at done the to Manet, you? Manet Junction. Manet Junction. People cross in the mornings to the industrial side on the Spintage Road and it creates a terrible traffic. At the minimum, some temporal uh, pedestrian... Uh, ah, where do you live? You don't live at cantonments and some of those places? No, I mean, uh, you know that, according to Chema Wuntumi, Cantonment and uh, Laboni belongs to uh, the uh, oh, people in, in, in power. They have the capacity to live there. I live at Santo. Oh, um, just close to the East Legon Hills. Yes. You know, very close. So, you people say it's East Legon Hills. But ordinarily, it's about 40 minutes drive to this place. Ideally. I left the house at 6.20. You'll be late, 6.20. Be late. You know, so uh, uh, they Five should days. manage the project well, put a temporary pedestrian walkway there so that the people are not crossing the motorway, causing the kind of uh, traffic we, are, we have. But uh, good morning to um, my colleagues here, uh, Senior Eduji. Uh, we've known him all the way back from Legon days, you know. And then my good brother AC, the man with the interesting accent, you know. This year's election, it's not going to be business as usual. And I'm glad that there are research outputs that is already suggesting that. But this election also, the issues that will determine the election will not be any different from the issues that have determined all our previous elections. And that is about the standard of living of our people. Are people able to afford living in Ghana? I think basically that is what this is about. So I'm not surprised that Afrobarometer is saying that the economy, jobs, education, infrastructure in the form of roads, and the perennial issue of corruption, of corruption. But the good thing that makes this election different is that there is a difference now on the ballot. There's a difference on the ballot. As far as economy is concerned, as far as jobs is concerned, there's one person whose name is always associated with jobs and creating jobs, and that's Alan Chomatin. 
And that is why he has put together what we call the Great Transformational Plan, a robust plan, not a list of manifesto promises, but a robust plan as to how we are going to achieve this. So in our current state of affairs, where practically nothing, nothing, it's working. It looks like it is a, it is a sin to be a Ghanaian. Because you have a government that continues to pass out policies that punish the ordinary Ghanaian. How is it so? At the center of all of these problems is corruption mainly procured through sole source procurement. Like what Eduji was talking about. Absolutely, I agree with him. Sole sourcing has become like the default way of awarding contracts under this government. Well, the argument that social sin is not wrong. When you have a situation where, according to Professor Bokken of Legon, as at April this year, 80% of all major contracts under this administration have been so sourced. Do you know the rationale for social sourcing? When there's a state of emergency or there's a specialized service, so we are being told, that rice for our young children to eat in secondary school, sardine for our young people in secondary school, calculators, supply of calculators to students, textbooks, all of these basic things that Ghanaians are involved in as businesses. Go to every district, there's somebody who deals in stationery. Go to every district, there are farmers who are farming whose produce can feed our children. But because of corruption incentive, we sit in Accra and award contract to individuals to import rice, import sardine, import everything. And we are here talking about dollar. After spending 2.1 billion CDs on planting for food and jobs is one, we still cannot feed our children. We import expired rice and give to them. We import rice that's expired and give to them. And we sit here and we want to use benign language to make it look good. Oh, it could have been worse. That's what he says. My word. Could have been above 17. My word. Was that a promise in 2016? I was with him campaigning in 2016. I don't understand. The two of you were together? Of course. <laughs> I was in the MPP at the time. Of course. Okay. The that, promise that was not to move it from 4.2 to 16. What was, the what was the promise? To stabilize it and re decrease it, reduce it. If possible. Yes. <laughs> that was a promise in 2016. And the rate of depreciation is what you work on. That's a promise. And the rate is good. But you look at it right now, it's no. over the roof. How can you tell me that the young Ghanaian no. whose salary in 2016 was equivalent to $2,000. It's now about $650. Mm. The equivalent of a salary in CDs Say that again. was about 2,000 CDs. Uh, uh, two, equivalent to $2,000. That person today, the equivalent of that same salary is about $600. Mm. And I tell me he's, he's better off. That she's better off. How do you make this argument? And it is that kind of insensitivity on the part of government and its communicators that I find worrying. The minimum you can do to Ghanaians is to appreciate the situation that they are in. But to deny a man his reality is the height of wickedness. Why is a man his is the height of wickedness. The person is suffering. And you say, no, no, you are not suffering. That you are fine. You don't even, you are not sensitive enough to even appreciate that or understand that you are suffering. However, A, B, C, and D is what I will do. And that is because truly they don't, truly they don't have the panacea. They don't have the solution. Why am I saying that? You mean Dr. Mahmoud Bami, head of economic management team, he doesn't have the solution? No, he doesn't. Okay. How, how does it sit with you, Roland? How does it sit with you? <laughs> that you are in a country that is supposed to be in a free market economy, right? Government decides that I need to give supply materials to young people to students we need to give food we need to give everything and instead of depending on the local economy for that supply 
We pick one businessman at random for whatever connection, and we give everything to that person, collapsing local economies. One of the biggest sectors of our economy is education supply sector. Education supply sector. Check what's happened to the sector. Right from Vice President, uh, running mate, uh, Matthew Poku Prempest time, every procurement that has got to do with education was centralized. Right from there. And that is how come this free SHS implementation has impoverished the average Ghanaian. I don't understand. How do you think that it was going to? <laughs> when you implement a policy like this, fantastic policy, what it's supposed to do is to bring economic opportunities to local people. So the local economy, the local where the economy, schools are located. Where the schools are located. So they supply food. One person will supply detergents. Another person who runs a cleaning company okay, will be cleaning eggs. the uh, eggs, uh, poultry products. So if I'm a poultry farmer at Santro Coffee, and Santro Coffee has a secondary school, I get the opportunity to supply my poultry to them. Ready off the car market. What they do is that it even reduces my transport cost. And everything I get to partake in the local economy under this administration in the name of free SHS. Everything is procured from Accra, including what? sardine. When you were in the MPP, yes. did you know people who were benefiting from centralized procurement? I don't know any specific persons, but if you check the list of how business has been done, it is also. And you see, some of us were hated because we kept complaining about these things. You kept complaining, yes, of course. We kept complaining that. How come today, today, we have a government, and I'm ending on the governance side, that according to the Mo Ibrahim Index, trust in the judiciary has reduced to 50 from 100. Record level, actually. Yes, from 100. And we are told that oh, human rights law is a rule of law. What kind of rule of law will lead to mistrust in the judiciary? The last bastion of our democracy, where we all go to when the need arises. What kind of rule of law? You, you get it? What kind of rule of law? Nice. It's the same thing under governance. You, today, everybody who fought corruption has been fought by this administration. Nice. Everybody who fought corruption, corruption has been has fought been by this administration. The special prosecutor today, as we speak, the special prosecutor. It's now Ankwanuma. It's now Ankwanuma. And every time you talk, they saw he's been given resources. He's been given resources who, at the end of the day. Him from doing his work? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, <laughs> See, what happens when you have a system like this? When I was coming, my brother, I was trying to follow the discussions online. I did everything. It kept buffering, buffering, buffering. Why? Because regulatory institutions are not working. Why are they not working? Corruption. Corruption. When was the last time your mobile connectivity what, was strong? about this corruption thing? When was it? So nothing seems to hold. And what disappoints me yeah, most is more. that when statesmen, people who should live above partisanship. Where are you going with this? No, I'm coming. <laughs> above partisanship. I engaged for them to speak in the national interest. They go to speak in the interest of parties. Who are you talking about? I'm, I think I, 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 Yesterday was one of the saddest days for me. Why? What's, what's happening? How can President Kufo look us in the face and tell us that the panacea to Ghana's problems is Sutal Hajj Baumia. That's his choice. How on earth? Oh, he doesn't have the right. You see, Professor Sassanti of Legon, <laughs> political science, told us that, you know, it's my opinion. It's mostly used as a defense for holding oh. positions that depart from expectation. But anytime you prefer any opinion, you are duty bound to provide the basis for it. And he did it. Is the president, former president, telling us that the exchange rate is good? That the depreciation of the city is good? Is he telling us that our economy today is in the best of hands? Is he telling us that our education today is at the best of qualities? Is he telling us that as a country we are able to feed ourselves? Is he telling us? President, President John A. Jokunku. Yes. What, what has he done because to you? Because no, no, what I know from him is that any time he spoke about governance, he spoke to indicators. If that same standard is to be applied, the president has departed from his I don't, usual You are saying President John Kung is playing ostrich. Of course. Can you mm. imagine that? First seven, Charlie, the survey, first seven uh, issues, it doesn't include exchange rate. 
No, economy. Economy. No, but he cannot be doing business. Economy. Don't confuse the economy. I'm a mathematician. I speak to data. All right. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Okay. 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 Mr. Okay. Mr. Mr. Do you agree? Do you agree? Debt to GDP. The indicators. Debt to GDP ratio. Both on the policies. Let's say monetary policy, fiscal policy, they are embedded in the economy. Do you agree? Of, of course, okay. of course. Of so course, the course. depreciation, debt to GDP, yes, the, of course. Uh, you see, the all all the the, they are part of it. Yes, all right. for all the now, now three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. Do, do you think that the solutions that are being proffered by your candidate yes. will resolve the problems that he imposed on Ghanaians? He I.e., debt to GDP going to 700 and over 60 no, billion. Your debt to GDP uh, rate is about 71.6. Yeah, well, I understand. Yes. In terms of the level of yes, debt, as, as not, uh, and then the, the rate being yes. as it is. It moves from 57. It even to went to over 100 percent. Wait. It even Some went people to. Some people 24 percent. Look, yo, I, from 33 it, to 57. It even went to so 100, please, uh, uh, 100 percent. So you are saying yes. 56 percent. It's worse than... No, no, no. I'm saying... So what are you saying? It, look, okay. listen. Let's do the analysis. If you took... So, so the basic GDP, question I ask you... You see, you... said something. Uh, the the business man, 100,000... Okay, okay, finish your I, question. I, I understand. Finish your question. Do you finish think that question. the solutions that are being yes. proffered yes. by Dr. Mahmoud Obama yes. will remain the ultimate panacea to take us from the problems that he put Ghanaians in? He put Ghanaians in, fine, he's part of the government, that's good. You see, we spoke, he spoke about the exchange rate matters. When they took over, when President Kufo was living, a businessman at Abu with $100,000 had 100,000, 100,000 CDs had $100,000, true or false? Worth $80,000, 1.2 if we want to make it that way. And that same businessman from that 100,000 moved under President Mahama, he claims $25,000. How much? $175,000 lost under the administration of Mills Mahama. Okay, that's a businessman. And now you're claiming it's about $7,000 in cool. How much have you lost from $25,000 to $7,000? That's, that's a businessman. Let's look at that, okay? In the effect of exchange rate depreciation on the business person. Okay, so these are matters that we need to be looking at. Debt to GDP uh, issues are very important. Okay, that's why we look at the I in from the beginning. I told you the growth of first uh, quarter, second quarter, and half year growth. Okay, and the projections that we are making uh, end year growth. That's very important. We have stabilized the system, and we say the economy is rebounding. Hence the figures, IMF and others projecting about 2.8% growth. We are saying now it's likely to hit 4% growth because of the data we are looking at. So these are matters that we know is going to have. Uh, Dr. Baumia is projecting going into uh, the next election. We are looking at things that, you know, will help bring the economy back on its feet. He's made the supposition of getting the private sector partnership, PPP. <laughs> Hence, his commitment to 3% of GDP for the private sector to, you know, projects and others. For instance, uh, road infrastructure, school infrastructure, hospital infrastructure. <laughs> this government has constructed over 47 hospitals from the scratch and completed several, several. I'm leaving Agenda 111 and its effects on the people. Road infrastructure and all that. That 3% is going to help somebody like my brother Nobi. Nobi has a car rental. Uh, if he has something like that, the, press, the, the, the vice president is saying going forward, instead of the state purchasing the VAs and, and those uh, vehicles for ministers and co, they're going to rent it from Nobi rentals. Okay? And then the maintenance and everything will be the responsibility of uh, Nobi renter. That it's the way we are going. There's the 3% of GDP commitment in this private sector. That is going to bolster the private sector, inject revenue uh, resources therein for them to be able to push. And then tax issues will be coming. He's talked about flat rate of taxes and, and tax amnesty for people who have, for one reason or the other, evaded tax or whatever. He says there's going to be a tax amnesty for you. Thereafter, we're going to have flat rate tax for business people and, and there's excitement in the business community as far as these issues uh, are concerned. This government is also focused Focused on road infrastructure. We have done a lot of road infrastructure than any government. 
12,830 kilometers and counting. Okay, compared to uh, 4,636 kilometers, somebody who claims he's master of infrastructure. You get it. Hospital infrastructure, massive. That is what we're doing. Then the education, that's the star of the moment. The education sector that they're talking about. Okay, I'm reading some things that this uh, spy something, the investigation will give us some details because Food and Drugs Authority have weighed in. And, and there are some facts that, you know, show different from what Okuji to a black or honorable is, is positive, okay? So let's get the details of the matter hereafter. Then we'll get to know the facts of the what matter. What the details? You get have, so don't uh, worry. We have paper trails and, yes, and yes, video yes. evidence. So what, what I'm getting is that the FDA that... was involved in the matter. And whatever happened to the repackaging... Are you saying that the FDA allowed... allowed no, no, no. Are you saying the FDA allowed for expired to, rice to be repackaged or whatever and sent to schools FDA, across the country? FDA has something to tell all of us, and they have their report, as you're saying, paper trail. So those things will be made available as time, with time, with the investigation. And education, you know, this government is actually... We had a government that district directors of education didn't even have vehicles to move around. Second supervisors didn't have vehicles, Okay. What are you talking about? Teachers work and 36 months they are now paid, they are paid for three months. Nanado came to, you know, pay off all these arrays, okay? We've got vehicles for all these education directors. Besides that, we brought free education for the masses of the Ghanaian people, okay? And then we are talking allowances. President Mahama couldn't sustain it, okay? And we are talking, he doesn't even believe in the success of that. Then the STEM project, the darling of Dr. Duchum and, and, and the team in education. STEM education, STEM schools, one. And, and you see, I saw Kwaku and Ho and Co praising Nanado for you has, okay? President Kufo said it yesterday, that sometimes you say, oh, did we start establish this. He developed and made it a complete university. U, U, UDS, okay, infrastructure, University of Education, Winima, my own institution. He provided a lot of infrastructure. You, you, Max, and others. President Kufo did a lot. You see, you have named it. You don't leave it like that. You see, I went to, uh, 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 yes, uh, Tamale Technical some time ago. I tell you, when I was walking there, I thought I was in a primary school. You get it? So please, round in up, my brother. The Alam people sometimes, you know, uh, they speak as if, as he said, I was in the trenches with him, okay? We all worked together. Today he feels, no, uh, he disagrees and he's joined uh, his, because they couldn't win the primary, so uh, they, they want to touch their own path. We wish them all the best. But we believe that the message our candidate is carrying is going around selling, okay? It's resonating with the people, and we are upbeat and confident that this election, Adige. Nana, uh, Dr. <laughs> Baumia is going to win hands down. Adige. One touch for Adige, you uh, have uh, made mention of the 24-hour, etc. And then the, uh, the Women's Development and so all the things like that become that. the solution to reversing the trend, <laughs> as we have it. They say they still hold the key to an issue. Going forward, looking at these benchmarks, that seem to be the concern of ordinary Ghanaians. The economy on one hand, unavailability of jobs. They are saying the education sector, they want free SHS, for example, to be maintained. And you take a look at the governance side, the corruption, etc. How do we improve these? Okay, so I want to even do this by making a reference quote. October 31st, you have three minutes, huh? yes. October 31st, 2016, Gabi Asari Otre Dako. The NDC is campaigning on infrastructure, and this is what a university don't says about it. The economy is number one, the economy is number two, the economy is number three. Because when we have a better economy, all other sectors perform well. Building a hospital is a very good thing. But that is not how it is done. If you have existing hospitals and you lack doctors, your doctors are going on strike and you do not have enough medicine. Don't go and build another hospital. So today, you are here parroting infrastructure, infrastructure. Gabi says it matters not. Grow the economy. Now, you said this morning that of the key factors, economy is one, but exchange rate is not. <laughs> Don't repeat that again. I respect you a great deal. Bamiya told us, when in doubt, observe the exchange rate. In fact, he says, 
that in an open economy, the most important indicator is the exchange rate. So the exchange rate is directly connected to the performance of the economy. You feel so ashamed. Jesus. You feel so ashamed that under the watch of Dr. Mahmoudou Bahamia, the exchange rate is doing 17 cities. It is the worst we have seen no. in democratic governance. No. Look, the economy suffers when inflation goes high. Under your watch, inflation went to 54%. At that time, we were the third worst scenario except South Sudan and Zimbabwe. That is where you have got. That is your scorecard. Do your distinction. Now, even more worrying, mm. harrowing. Akufuado and Bamia in eight years have shown us horror movies. They've shown <laughs> what movie? Horror movies in the day, night, and every time. And you have the temerity to sit on air and say you have done infrastructure. You have inflated the cost of infrastructure project for your personal benefit. Do you know the most worrying part? The Auditor General appointed by Mr. Akufuado conducted an audit on Cocoa Road project and concluded that 87% of those contracts were awarded sole source, true or false, and said by reason of that sole source, it costs the taxpayer you should more. Be wrapping up. Yes, I will. It costs the taxpayer more. Now he says, if it was NDC, it could be worse. Regrettable. You don't even understand the, how the economy because works. The data is oh, high. please. The reason why our Western city rates. is going up is that we have depleted our reserve. That's yeah, about that's, that's about, about you too. You borrowed so much no. that under John Mahama, the number one item on our budget was salaries and emoluments. Mm. Today, it is interest payment and amortization. You don't even understand the economy. Two. That was number two under my armor. Yes, but now it is number one <laughs> because the bulk <laughs> of the money <laughs> is used to service our debt. And that is why the HA. And you don't service, hold on, you don't service your public debt using CDs. So you have to go and buy. Simple economics. The more you chase something, the higher the pressure you put on it. I think you should know this. And next time, don't do that. that. <laughs> but you see, the painful part, and I'll, conclu up, I'll conclude on this. He talks about President Kufo. If a man wakes up one morning and knocks off zeros from his currency, how is that sound economic management? Oh. How is that sound economic management? Oh. And so that is what you did. John Mahama could have just woken up one morning and said, I'm knocking off zeros. You don't do that. First of all, you have to have strong buffet. And that is why John Mahama left you the sinking fund, oh. the heritage please, fund, please. All the Esla funds, Esla alone had given you over 30 Energy billion. You wasted it. But you see, I'll conclude on this. No, so you're supposed to conclude. Oh, yeah, now let me just, <laughs> no, 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 oh, no. Let me just conclude. No. No. You, see, you see, there is a saying if you go to the University of Ghana, <laughs> Legon Hall, yes. the motto is there mm -hmm. to whom much is given, much, much is, is expected. Yes. Akufado and Bamia, please. Akufado yes. and Bamia, in eight years, have gotten 700 billion Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. 700 billion. Yes. In eight years, Mills, Mahama, and Misata. They said they have roads. Oh, no, hold on. 12, you, are, you are now taking part of the of time. What happened is that under Joe Mahama, the envelope of financial resources complying loans, tax revenue mm -hmm. was 248 Massive billion in eight years. In the space of seven years, Tax revenue it's alone is 400 house. billion. <laughs> what have you used the money for? Phenomenal. We have them. Painfully. You have stopped it in three minutes. 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 Where do you we think we we're headed if we maintain the same team or Before unless we change? Massive. Upgrade. Because you've given us the solutions in the GTP. Where do you think we're headed if we maintain the same we team or we have an alternative in Alan German thing. And I, I, I like the way you pose your question because... Because it's to you. Yes, and, and that's also because truly, um, from the analysis thus far, there is very little difference between the MPP and the NDC. There's very little. It's the, the same issues, 2016. The same issues we had is the same issues we're having. If you check headlines, 
the same headlines we had in 2016 is the same headlines we are having. It is only the difference is in the little degree of the challenges. But the question I have is that, you see, when you talk about 7 to 1% of our GDP to debt ratio and all of that, the average Ghanaian may not appreciate it. It means that if you earn a 1,000 CDs, you spend 700, uh, 700 and, um, seven, yeah, 710 CDs to pay debt, and you're left with only 290 CDs. That is what it means. And that is the precarious state that Ghana is in. This governance where you borrow and buy, we call it tomatoes economy. Borrow and spend, borrow and spend. It's not the way out. And that is why neither the MPP nor the NDC holds the solution for this country. Because as it stands now, as it stands now, the only way we can borrow from the international market will be at cutthroat uh, interest rates. Yep. We are so unattractive that whilst other countries are borrowing at 1%, 3%, we will have to be borrowing at about 15%. In fact, Toko Board did 8% in 2022. No, please, please allow him. So, allow so, him. So, so when you have that situation, <laughs> maintaining the status quo of the duopoly means that going, getting worse off. Alan Chamatin says a simple thing. We cannot continue to borrow. So what do we do? Let us depend on creating the policies that will let the private sector thrive. That is all. The private sector remains the engine of growth. And that is why he has always been able, with policy, to attract investment into the private sector in key areas, wherever he has managed uh, uh, any aspects of the economy, whether under President Kufo or under President Kufuado. Alan has also said that sole source procurement must be abolished from our laws, and he has committed himself to that. Not John Mahama or al Haj Baumia has been able to commit themselves to that. Why? Because that is the only way they can maintain the kind of poor economics that they do. They can't. And if you are not changing fundamentally these things, there's no hope. And that is why our only hope rests in Alan Martin, who has the capacity to say, so source and abolish it. When you abolish it, then you can take care of the cronism and this, this uh, family and friends situation. Because if it's competitive tendering, a company that has just been set up by the president's daughter or the president's niece or nephew, cannot just be given a contract or awarded a contract. And that is where we are headed. But the, they not they're so, please, no why, when, uh, you are, when you are chastising when President Mahama for giving a contract to, the, the um, what's the name? Ibrahim, Ibrahim Mahama. Was Ibrahim Mahama a stranger? But you have carried our ambulance supply system. You've carried so many things. So that one is that there's no difference. But my brother was giving contracts. You don't understand. No, no. So in conclusion, but in conclusion, my conclusion remark is that my conclusion remark is that the most important criteria, the most important criteria to determine who to be the next president should be integrity. And as far as that one is. Of course. Take Alan Martin out. The ah, rest are all Niyama, Niyama says, listen, you see, <laughs> when talking to. reminds me so much of uh, Dr. Mount Baumia and uh, Kufuado in 2016. Mm -hmm. Waxing lyrical with flowery words, <laughs> with straight face and bravado. We're what does bravado mean? We're selling our um, <laughs> one. Uh, Medina Akra says, Dr. Mount Baumia may have issues when it comes to exchange rates. And then also the bread and butter subject that is under discussion. But just go around, see the roads. Look at the various stages at which we have Agenda 111. Some have even been completed. So they need to be taken seriously and given the nod. Mr. Backman in Cape Coast says, at the heart of every developing economy is the exchange rate. Once you fail with the exchange rate, you have failed with the economy. All right. And then um, lawyer Vincent Frimpong, good morning to you. It's been a while. I hope you're well. He says, good morning, Roland. I have a problem with your line of questioning this morning. If your question about economic difficulties caused by Dr. Baumia, and that is what you say. It is a leading question, which is wrongly premised. Oh, okay. And it simply becomes a spin and propaganda for NDC. <laughs> Are we not He continues. Dr. Oh, please, 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 please. 
No, I don't understand. Dr. Baumia, no, it's his message. I want to. I want. Dr. Baumia is not the current president. Of course, he is part of the government, but is not the final decision maker. Yet, he has made significant contributions that are transformational. What Dr. Baumia has contributed so far is an indicator that he will be an excellent president. Helga Boedi, good morning to you, Helga. It's been a while. He says, can we say, is he show us on the screen the hospital is talking about? Yes. Where are the roads? Are they on planet Jupiter? No, no, we are. drive around they, all they, the they, time. They, they constructed roads from Accra to Helga Boedi. And then this one is coming from Uncle Taf. Good morning. Hey, please. Good morning to you, Uncle Taf. Uncle Taf says, he says, you see, she should stop speaking big English. Well, uh, communication, you have to speak big English, too. And then uh, Roland Jan, good morning to you. He says, I just graduated as an Indian trained system engineer and also got certified as a comp TIA network engineer and server administrator last Friday. Congratulations to you, Roland John. He says he knows you. You know, Roland, he said you guys used to be in nooks together. You used to be a student politician yeah, back was, in the day. I was in the secretary in 2012. Oh, fantastic, man. Good morning and, to you, Roland John. Congratulations. I was the one who was coaching them. <laughs> you were the one? He <laughs> hey, was a legal advisor. Of All right. Legal legal advisor Nelson Nakotia says, <laughs> Yeah, Roland, we're voting MPP yeah. out with all our strength, though. They have no idea the mess they have caused. Well, Nelson. Sam Piali says, President Kufour's exchange rate was artificial and fictitious. Removing zeros from your depreciated currency is not an economic growth indicator. He says, George, you go explain tire. Fabia <laughs> J says, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, all the way. Stephen Penn says, experts advise government that the 9 billion Ghana CD could save the affected banks, but the corruption infested government ignored that advice and squandered and spent a whole 25 billion. Stephen Penwa, thank you for the messages as well. Nana Mapokria, good morning to you, wherever you're watching us from. We bring you, we bring you beachy tidings. It's not for me, it's from Maha Beach Resort. Let me, what do you want me to read? And Sandy joined this Christmas, I'll read it. Can you read this for me? He spoke yesterday. Can you read this? Book, book, book two, book two nights and get the third night free. With all meals inclusive, starting from 6,000 Ghana cities for a couple. The package offers guests free access to all in-house facilities, <laughs> swimming pool, gymnasium, cinema with popcorn all available, boardrooms, snicker games all available, and then great entertainment. You can also enjoy free pickups from the airport if you arrive on weekends in Takrade for that weekend getaway for Maha Beach Resort. Fun activities will include the beautiful terrace they have with a uh, goat cart splash playground for children. And then also bouncy castles are available, trampolines. And then also um, bicycle rides, quid bike rides, all available. Just in case um, you want to get in touch with them, please make sure you book before the 1st of December and enjoy that 10% discount. You can contact them, 030 -39 and then also 77773 or 050 157 0684. You can also do an email sm at Get onto social media, Maha Beach Resort available. You should actually read this. It's from Gabby Ochridako. 5.52 early morning. Hey. 19th of November 2016. Vote for change, not interchange. Thank you. <laughs> Why did you say I should read?